For decades, snippets of the third secret of Fatima trickled out from popes and clergymen, hinting at church apostasy, divine chastisement, and connections to other Marian prophecies like Our Lady of Good Success, La Salette, and Akita. Then, in 2000, 40 years after Our Lady's requested date, Pope John Paul II authorized its public release. However, the unveiled secret seemed fragmented and at odds with previous clerical descriptions, including those of John Paul II himself. Is there more to the third secret? What might the Vatican be concealing? And why was 1960 the chosen year for its revelation? Cardinal Ratzinger pointed out that the contents of the envelope that held the third secret for so long might be disappointing to some. A careful reading of the text of the so-called Third Secret of Fatima, published here in its entirety long after the fact and by decision of the Holy Father, will probably prove disappointing or surprising after all the speculation it has stirred. No great mystery is revealed, nor is the future unveiled. We see the Church of the Martyrs of the Century, which has just passed represented in a scene described in a language which is symbolic and not easy to decipher. Is this what the Mother of the Lord wished to communicate to Christianity and to humanity at a time of great difficulty and distress? Is it of any help to us at the beginning of the new millennium? Or are these only projections of the inner world of children, brought up in a climate of profound piety, but shaken at the same time by the tempests which threaten their own time? How should we understand the vision? What are we to make of it? To sum up Cardinal Ratzinger on the third secret, nothing to see here, folks. The Marian apparitions at Fatima, Portugal, occurred in 1917, when three shepherd children, Lucia dos Santos and her cousins, Jacinta and Francisco Marto, were visited by the Blessed Virgin Mary. Starting on May 13th and continuing monthly until October 13th, Our Lady appeared to the children and conveyed messages urging prayer, penance, and devotion to her immaculate heart. The apparitions included prophetic revelations and culminated in the miracle of the sun, witnessed by a large crowd where the sun appeared to dance in the sky. These events have since become significant in Catholic devotion, drawing millions of pilgrims to Fatima annually. The first two secrets of Fatima, revealed by the Virgin Mary to the three shepherd children in 1917, are as follows. The first secret involved a vision of hell, where the children saw souls of sinners suffering in a vast sea of fire. Mary explained that many souls go to hell because there are none to pray and make sacrifices for them. She emphasized the importance of the Holy Rosary and devotion to her Immaculate Heart to save souls from this fate. The second secret predicted the end of the First World War and a second more devastating war, World War II, if humanity did not cease offending God. Mary warned that when a night illuminated by an unknown light appeared, it would signal that God was about to punish the world for its sins. She also called for the consecration of Russia to her Immaculate Heart and the establishment of the First Saturday's devotion, promising peace and the conversion of Russia if her requests were heeded. The third secret, as released by the Vatican in the year 2000, is as follows. After the two parts which I have already explained, at the left of Our Lady and a little above, we saw an angel with a flaming sword in his left hand. Flashing, it gave out flames that looked as though they would set the world on fire but they died out in contact with the splendor that Our Lady radiated toward him from her right hand. Pointing to the earth with his right hand, the angel cried out in a loud voice, Penance! 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 And we saw in an immense light that is God. Something similar to how people appear in a mirror when they pass in front of it, a bishop dressed in white. We had the impression that it was the Holy Father. Other bishops, priests, men and women religious going up a steep mountain, at the top of which 
there was a big cross of rough-hewn trunks as of a cork tree with the bark. Before reaching there, the Holy Father passed through a big city, half in ruins and half trembling with halting step. Afflicted with pain and sorrow, he prayed for the souls of the corpses he met on his way. Having reached the top of the mountain, on his knees at the foot of the big cross, he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him, and in the same way, they died one after another. The other bishops, priests, men and women religious, and various, lay people of different ranks and positions. Beneath the two arms of the cross, there were two angels, each with a crystal aspersorium in his hand, in which they gathered up the blood of the martyrs, and with it sprinkled the souls that were making their way to God. In 1941, Sister Lucia, the young girl to whom Mother Mary appeared in Fatima, disclosed two of the three secrets she had been given. She revealed these secrets at the request of the local bishop, but hesitated to reveal the third, uncertain if it was God's will. Consequently, she kept it hidden. However, in 1943, Sister Lucia fell seriously ill, and the bishop instructed her to write down the third secret. Obeying his orders, she wrote it down and sealed it in an envelope, stipulating it should not be opened until 1960, when it would presumably be clearer. When 1960 arrived, the Vatican issued a press release suggesting that the third secret would likely remain sealed indefinitely. It wasn't until June 26, 2000, 40 years later, that the Vatican finally published the third secret. This secret described a vision of the Holy Father and other clergy ascending a steep mountain through a city of ruins where they were eventually shot by soldiers. Critics, however, argue that this text was not the genuine third secret, or at least not its entirety. Their skepticism is based on several points. Firstly, Sister Lucia claimed to have written the secret on a single sheet of paper, whereas the Vatican's version spans four pages. Father Joaquin Alonso, the official Fatima archivist for 16 years, corroborates this in his writings. Additionally, it is believed that the third secret was originally a signed letter to the Bishop of Liria, which contradicts the format of the Vatican's document. If the 2000 disclosure wasn't the authentic third secret, what might it be? Many closely involved with Fatima and the Vatican have speculated about the true essence of the final secret. Cardinal Chiappi, who read the third secret and served as personal theologian to Popes John XXIII, Paul VI, and John Paul II, stated that it foretold a great apostasy in the Church beginning at its highest levels. In 1984, Bishop Alberto Cosme do Amaral of Fatima clarified that the third secret of Fatima does not predict an atomic war or the end of the world. Instead, it concerns a crisis within the Catholic faith. In her third memoir, completed in August 1941, Sister Lucy revealed that the secret of Fatima comprises three parts. She documented the first two parts at that time, stating, the secret is made up of three distinct parts, two of which I am now going to reveal. She felt compelled to disclose the first two parts, but remained silent about the third, as she had not been given permission from heaven to reveal it. Quoting Father Alonso, the official Fatima archivist, in Portugal, the dogma of the faith will always be preserved. The phrase most clearly implies a critical state of faith, which other nations will suffer, that is to say, a crisis of faith, whereas Portugal will preserve its faith. In the period preceding the great triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, terrible things are to happen. These form the content of the third part of the secret. What are they? If in Portugal, the dogma of the faith will always be preserved. It can be clearly deduced from this that in other parts of the church, these dogmas are going to become obscure or even lost altogether. Thus, it is quite possible that in this intermediate period which is in question after 1960 
and before the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the text makes concrete references to the crisis of the faith of the Church and to the negligence of the pastors themselves. One conclusion does indeed seem to be beyond question. The content of the unpublished part of the secret does not refer to new wars or political upheavals, but to happenings of a religious and intra-church character, which of their nature are still more grave. Reverend Dr. Malachi Martin, who attended the Second Vatican Council, 1962 to 1965, reported seeing a portion of the secret that the Vatican's version omitted, a prediction of a major doctrinal and moral collapse within the modern Catholic Church. Father Charles Fiore, who reviewed the secret over 35 years ago, echoed this sentiment, describing it as foreseeing a profound spiritual downfall within the Church, a fact Vatican officials are reluctant to admit. By 1984, knowledgeable Church authorities, including Cardinal Ratzinger, confirmed that the third secret pertains to a significant loss of faith, an apostasy from which Portugal would be spared. Cardinal Ratzinger, in an interview with Vittorio Massori, acknowledged the final part of the secret addresses dangers threatening the faith and life of Christians and therefore the world. This statement seems out of place when compared to Ratzinger's 2000 statement upon the supposed release of the third secret. Sister Lucy indicated that the prophecy of the third secret would become clearer by 1960. Since then, the world has witnessed a severe decline in faith, unfolding the prophecy before our eyes, seeming to coincide with the beginning of Vatican II. In his 1976 book, The Secret of Fatima, Fact and Legend, Father Alonso expanded on his theory that the third secret concerns a crisis of faith and pastoral negligence within the church. He suggested that the text likely makes specific references to internal church struggles and deficiencies within the upper hierarchy, drawing on his extensive interviews with Sister Lucy. Cardinal Silvio Oddi, former secretary to Archbishop Angelo Roncalli, later Pope John XXIII, speculated that the third secret might relate to the convocation of the Second Vatican Council. He suggested that Pope John XXIII's decision to convene the Council in 1960 was influenced by the secret and that the resulting internal church revolution, including a significant number of priests abandoning the priesthood, was linked to the secret's contents. He mentioned Pope Paul VI's 1968 lament about the auto-destruction within the church, famously noting that Satan's smoke has entered the temple of God. Cardinal Oddi argued that the third secret was not about Russia's conversion, but rather a warning against apostasy within the Church. The significant changes and upheavals following Vatican II are seen by many as the realization of this prediction. Consequently, the reforms of Vatican II are believed by some to be the likely fulfillment of the third secret's prophecy. Father Alonso also stated, does the unpublished text speak of concrete circumstances? It is very possible that it speaks not only of a real crisis of the faith in the Church during this in-between period, but like the secret of La Salette, for example, there are more concrete references to the internal struggles of Catholics or to the fall of priests and religious. Perhaps it even refers to the failures of the upper hierarchy of the Church. In a 1980 interview for the German magazine Stimme der Globe, published in October 1981, John Paul II was asked explicitly to speak about the third secret. He said, because of the seriousness of its contents, in order not to encourage the worldwide power of communism to carry out certain coups, my predecessors in the chair of Peter have diplomatically preferred to withhold its publication. On the other hand, it should be sufficient for all Christians to know this much, if there is a message in which it is said that the oceans will flood entire sections of the earth, that from one moment to the other, millions of people will perish. There is no longer any point 
in really wanting to publish this secret message. Many want to know merely out of curiosity or because of their taste for sensationalism, but they forget that to know implies for them a responsibility. It is dangerous to want to satisfy one's curiosity only if one is convinced that we can do nothing against a catastrophe that has been predicted. He held up his rosary and stated, Here is the remedy against this evil. Pray, pray, and ask for nothing else. Put everything in the hands of the Mother of God. Asked what would happen in the church, he said, We must be prepared to undergo great trials in the not-too-distant future. Trials that will require us to be ready to give up even our lives, and a total gift of self to Christ and for Christ. Through your prayers and mine, it is possible to alleviate this tribulation, but it is no longer possible to avert it, because it is only in this way that the Church can be effectively renewed. How many times, indeed, has the renewal of the Church been affected in blood? This time again, it will not be otherwise. We must be strong. We must entrust ourselves to Christ and to His Holy Mother, and we must be attentive very attentive to the prayer of the rosary. Very inspiring quote from the late Pope and very good spiritual advice. But seemingly very different from the third secret the Holy Father ordered released in 2000. What do you think? Is the 2000 release the complete and authentic third secret of Fatima or is there more? Tell us what you think in the comments. And remember, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time on Christus Imperate.